know, one of the best things about Minecraft is that the developers actually listen to the community. I mean, we asked for lava boats, and we got striders. I mean, it's not the exact same, but it's really close. Look at these guys, aren't they awesome? We can literally ride lava walking animals. That is incredible. However, we need to do some touch-ups around the base. In particular, I need to work on my entrance. This is literally how I've gotten to my base for the past like month now. It's, it's not the best way because I can fall off the cliff, I can miss the ladder, I can miss the jumps. Pretty much anything bad can happen and I really just need to fix it. We need to do it the right way though. We can't just go to town carving out the mountain, even though that might look like what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to carve out about half the width that we'll actually need, maybe a little bit more because we might have some decorations on the side uh, and just stuff like that. But we'll probably go in two or three blocks like this, maybe one more layer on the side, kind of like this. That way we can get a nice path, some stairs. It'll probably have a little curve here. I don't want to make it too straight because then, I mean, that takes out some of the interest. And then we're going to have to have some pretty steep stairs over here. That's one of the problems with living in the ravine. There's lots of steep uh, parts, lots of cliffs that we have to traverse, so lots of stairs. I need kind of like a good elevator. Maybe we'll do something with ender pearls at some point. But either way, I'm going to start working on our ravine little stairway over here. <laughs> Okay, so the basic shape is in now, and I'm, I'm really liking this. It kind of winds and twists around. It goes down to two blocks here, but I think overall it's pretty good. We'll, we'll check in some more of these lanterns around the place. Give us some more light because it is very, very dark in the nether, and I think that's as far as we're going to go with this path because I have something else that I want to talk about. It'll be uh, nice to have an actual entrance into the base instead of parkouring. And I'm really loving these lanterns. Wow, I'm just blabbering on. Let me go show you what I want to talk about. This section of the video is me attempting to explain YouTuber burnout. So when you create content on YouTube, you have like a predetermined amount of work that you're able to put out. And this can vary depending on the amount of time you have, how skilled you are at producing the content, and even what type of content. But essentially, you have this canal right here. This is the amount of work you can output. And so this lava is going to represent the work that you can put out. I like to call this the workflow. So when you first begin YouTube, your workflow is amazing. The canal that holds all of the work that's flowing into YouTube is pristine. It's quartz. It's so nice and super exciting. However, this quickly wears off and you start to lose that quartz and it turns into basalt. Basalt is fine and all and it works perfectly well and as you can see, the workflow is still where it's at. It's just not as exciting anymore because you've gotten used to it. This basalt lasts for a very long time and it's super sturdy as you can see very structurally sound however this too can change and it starts to erode if you don't take breaks and you just keep pushing and pushing eventually this canal is gonna start to break away it's gonna start to turn into the regular basalt and this is where you start to have problems. It might not show at first but as it starts to degrade more and more, you start to lose some of that productivity and it starts to get clogged up. <laughs> and it can even burn you, apparently. Then it starts getting clogged on the other side and this is when you really start to see your work suffering. As you can see over here, the work output really has decreased and the quality of it is just all over the place. You don't know what you're doing. People start to question why you're even here. And so at this point, you really should take a break. But some YouTubers don't. They keep pushing, they keep pushing, until finally they break. And by break, I mean their, their canal gets clogged up with the basalt, and they quit. This is 
what I think YouTuber burnout is like. And so you really need to take some time to give yourself a break. You need to clean out those canals so that your workflow can really start improving, get back to where you were so you can produce the content that you need. So in recap, we have the work canal right here and we have the workflow over here. The work canal is what determines the quality of the workflow and your workflow is determined by pre-existing factors. And so when you start to suffer, it gets clogged up, your canal isn't working properly and you really need to take some time for yourself. That way YouTube doesn't suffer. It might be blocked for a little bit and you're not posting content for a few days but that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. And this is what happened to me recently. I was having a bit of I guess you could call it YouTuber burnout, but I was just having a hard time coming up with the content at the speed that I wanted it, and it really just wasn't working for me. I just can't find the motivation to do what I want to do. So, like everybody else, I decided to take a break. Now, this break wasn't super long. It wasn't even like disconnecting from social media all the way. I just took a few days off to clean my canal and got it back to this basalt. And those few days were amazing. I really haven't taken a break from YouTube ever since I started it. And this was a well-deserved, well-needed break. I actually recorded this before that break, but now it's done. So we're getting back on the YouTube grind. So the moral of the story, I'm going to take some time to let myself reset, build up those canals, and hopefully get back on track to where I want to be. And one of the things I wanted to ask you guys was, what do you like better? Do you like vanillium for the flooring, or do you like the plain netherrack? I'm kind of undecided at this point, and I would like some input <laughs> if that would be cool. I guess I haven't really shown this off well either. This is just a little bridge that I made. We have the trap doors for the railings. I think it's a nice neat little bridge. I'll experiment with a couple other designs. Oh, and uh, I totally forgot to mention this. We have gravel behind all of the chests now. See, so we look back there. All the gravel. I think that was a really helpful touch. Uh, we're going to do that more. Use gravel a lot more because we get it for free from the piglins, which is really nice. I don't know if anybody even builds with gravel now. Like, do you guys know of anybody that builds with gravel? Not like concrete, but the gravel itself. Well, the eggs are apparently not working. This guy is definitely not tracking that egg. <laughs> He's just walking over my pressure plates. This is a big problem. I need to get them to stop walking over the pressure plates. It's so annoying. I put an egg here with the, the usual trap door trick, but it's not really working. But for now, I want to experiment with making an arch real quick. How do we have it like this? Uh-huh. Is that too tall? That might be a little bit too tall. I think we're going to have like a, a pathway going along the edge right here as well to kind of... Yeah, this is a really nice view. In fact, I, I actually really like this. So I was thinking we'd have trim going along the edges, kind of like this. Wherever there's an edge, we have this trim. Maybe I'll push it out one block, kind of like what we got going on with the stairs down there. And speaking of these stairs down here, I wanted to try out some design features as well well so i did like i said i want to try and use the gravel a bit more maybe we'll push it back one block and i think we're gonna pair it up with the basalt because i i really love basalt it's like my favorite block ever so yeah i think we'll push the gravel back one block and i also wanted to try adding some more soul sand that way we can put nether warts on it and get a little bit of color in the place so that might be kind of cool you know kind of how we worked it in up at the pigment farm up there, which is kind of cool. So I'll do a little bit of work here and I'll show you what it looks like. How is that? Oh, I guess we need a couple more pieces of gravel right there. Yeah, I just played around with it and I, I kind of like this. It's very, very gray though. So we might maybe add some more of the warp stuff like maybe for the ceiling or something like that i do want to keep the lanterns though and it's very good that we have the, the gray of the lanterns with the gray of the wall so maybe uh, i don't know maybe we should add some magma to kind of match the lanterns get some more yellows in let me know what you guys think i always 
appreciate that. And it gets a little close right here, but that's probably fine. You know, the more I look at it, I think the more I like it, but it's not entirely finished. However, I did want to show you guys something. What looks more like coal? I mean, personally, I'm going to go with the Blackstone all day. This looks so much more like coal. You can actually see the chunks of it. It does kind of remind me of charcoal because it's so light, but still, come on, guys. This has got to be coal, right? So thanks for the comment, Jaden.